the Killers at the Sound Academy on Saturday, September 22nd, 2012. <laughs> what are you made of? Flesh and b -b 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 bone. Hello, internet world. Pop Man here. Pop as in soda pop. And I'm back with my 85th concert review for. <sighs> killers, 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 killers. <laughs> the here an actual ticket stub that uh, someone else at the show was kind enough to give to me because uh, this killer show kind of slipped under my radar of shows to go see actually the first show that I bought from st uh, ticket stub no not ticket stub uh, stub hub fortunately I had to pay um, close to a hundred dollars to get to see the killers, but if you bought it through Ticketmaster, you would have only paid $69.50. Killers play this show at the Sound Academy, which is a 3,000 seat venue. To put it into comparison, this December, they're coming back to Toronto to play the Air Canada Center, and that seats 20,000 people. So if the killers can play a 20,000 seat venue, and they play a 3,000 seat venue, every single person inside that building was there to see the killers. Hardcore. The stage setup for the show was nothing too special, really. No video walls, um, no back, um, you know, like the canvas thing with the band name on it. Uh, to what I recall, none of that. The only thing was Brandon Flowers, where uh, his, his uh, microphone was, was a uh, illuminated uh, LCD, uh, lightning bolt. Um, whereas on, the, on a couple of last tours, he used a K. So I guess they've changed now from a K to a lightning bolt. They took the stage to Runaways. But the week that it came out, man, I was all over that song. I was all about it. Doom, doom, we're just runaways. I knew that when I met you, I'm not gonna let you run away. Um, fuck, what a good song. Um, the second song of the set was Somebody Told Me. And of course, you know, that's the song that made them famous. And that just continued the hype from uh, Runaways. And it just carried on through. Of course, everyone's going to remember Somebody Told Me. If you don't remember that, you're probably too young. And that's really scary. I was going to say the F word, but pff, no fucking way. After that was Spaceman. And that, you know, was also another kind of uh, really energetic song uh, where you get the chorus where he goes, Spaceman says, everybody look down. Fifth track in saw another uh, Battleborn song. And that was the uh, lead track, Flesh and Bone. Um, which, of course, a lot of people didn't know. Not everyone's going to know it. But the album had only been out for a couple of days. Next up was A Brace from Samstown. Uh, for reasons unknown and reading off a monitor here. Uh, bling, Confessions of a King. Um, for reasons unknown was pretty good. Let's skip that for now. Confessions of a King. This is one of my favorite killer songs. By the way, side note, my favorite killer song is Move Away. Um, and I really hope that one day when I see the killers live, because this was my third time, I really hope they play Move Away. Bling was unreal though. The ending of the song where it really picks up and Brandon gets into that sort of, you know, possessed singing state as he always does. Um, really taps into a... Um, Kind of like a, uh, almost like a, a spirit of Elvis. He really channels that really well when he sings live with Bling Confessions of a King. Which, by the way, you know what, I really haven't read into the song a lot, but Confessions of a King, the King of Rock and Roll, Elvis? M maybe I'm onto something, I, I don't know. But it makes sense, it makes a lot of sense. But, uh, I, I went nuts at that, um, at, at the end of uh, Confessions of a King. It was just off the hook, it was unreal, and uh, one of my personal highlights of the show. Next up was another track off of Battleborn, Miss Atomic Bomb, which I gotta tell you, threw me off. 
didn't see it as being a really awesome song live, and I was really surprised that people knew it because it's a new song, but people took to it. Miss Atomic Bomb, uh, if you're seeing the Killers on this upcoming tour, get ready for that track because that's going to be an, um, one of their staples for years to come. I have a feeling that they're probably going to release that as a single at some point. Um, I get that feeling. Uh, Miss Atomic Bomb, Flesh and Bone, and um, I don't know. But those two tracks definitely will be released as singles at some point. I think. I am OH. I am HO. What's up? Uh, after that came Human, and I'm not gonna lie, I've never been a big fan of Human. I mean, I like the song. It's got the obligatory synths. It just, it never hit home, kind of like Mr. Brightside or for Battleborn, Runaways. Um, Runaways for me is, is uh, I think, their best lead single. Song 10 of the night was the first low point of the show for me, um, Here With Me. Not a fan of the song. It's just, I find it very boring and it kind of drags on. To me, it just sounds like a sad old guy at a karaoke bar in the middle of nowhere in some small American town. Next song of the night was... Can you guess it? Huh? Can you guess it? Internet world? Can you... Can you... Can you... Slipping in my faith until I fall. You never return. Woman, open the door, don't let it sting. I wanna breathe that. Again. Can you read my mind? <laughs> song starts off slow, but I love the direction of this song. And live, it just gets better as it goes on. When it got to the bridge of the song, that's where it really picked up. Like, again, he channels that sort of spirit of Elvis. Second last song of the set was the song most people were waiting for, Mr. Brightside. Um, this is a very special song because I think it was, in my opinion, the song of the 2000s. It was released right in the middle of the 2000s, late 2004, early 2005. Um, part of the, the the movement with the killers, the strokes, the white stripes. Um, the biggest thing of all was that everybody listened to Mr. Brightside. I remember back in the day I was working at a sports store and I would see um, like 13 year old girls coming in, you know, with like Ugg boots and just like total teeny boppers. But they were, they were rocking out to it. And then, like, there was, like, my manager who was, like, in his early 40s and he was rocking out to the killers. Like, I know it's not, like, it's not a stairway to heaven. So for me, hearing that song live, 3,000 people, everyone going ape shit, it was incredible. Last song of the main set was All These Things That I've Done. And as you could probably imagine, people were going ape shit to the song. One of the cool parts about the show was um, at the apex of the song, um, confetti just sort of started falling uh, from the roof of the of the venue, and um, it was actually um, lightning bolt and K-shaped uh, pieces of confetti. I was gonna keep a few, but they were kind of dirty, so really, really uh, just crazy, energetic song for the crowd. Um, there wasn't a lot of crowd surfing or moshing. Um, at this killer's show in particular, but there were a few pockets of fans that started jostling midway uh, through all these things that I've done. So um, as any hardcore concert enthusiast, I uh, joined the crowd and uh, I actually got a picture with one of the dudes, really cool guy, and uh, picture is in the description. I have to thank him and everyone in that group for, for starting the mosh because um, uh, you know, as I, you know, as you've seen or as I've told you from previous reviews, I am all about moshing and I'm all about crowd surfing. And um, I, again, my thanks goes out to you guys. Thank you very much for uh, stirring up some excitement in the crowd.
three track uh, encore and the first one was The Rising Tide. Um, one of my lesser favorite tracks off of Battleborn, um, also flat uh, amongst the, the audience. Second track, Jenny was a friend of mine. People didn't go crazy for it, but I was really glad to hear it as um, it's one of my favorite songs off of Hot Fuss. And last song of the night, I don't think it was the greatest track for, to, to end off the entire show, but they ended off with When You Were Young. Uh, it's a really good song. Um, yes, good song. That's what I can say about it. I really enjoy it. Don't think it was the best killer song to send us on our way. Um, all these things that I've done, I think, would have been the best song to send people home on. I give this killer show one soaked, salt-stained skinny jeans out of five. Man, that's a ridiculous meter. I'm going to have to repeat that for every single review I do for the rest of my life. Uh, um, the reason I give it just one uh, was because there really wasn't a lot of moshing. I found that little pocket of mosh near the end of the main set, but it, it wasn't enough. Zero shoes to the back of the head um, for this killer show. Absolutely no crowd surfing whatsoever. It didn't really happen. Little disappointed. Again, I'm looking forward to the December show. Please, people, come on. Who's going up, huh? You going up? You going up? Come on, big boy, let's go. Let's go. Come on, come on. And the overall total, um, I give the Killers for their September 22nd show at the Sound Academy, nine out of 10 cocks out that were rocked out for them. If you ever get a chance, do go see the Killers, especially if it's at a small venue. Um, they, will, they will rock the house. All right, dudes and dudettes, thanks for watching my review and stay tuned because next concert that I have lined up is for the Smashing Pumpkins. Man, I just got goosebumps saying that. I grew up with this band. I'm going to see them for the first time. I am so stoked. It's unbelievable. If you haven't heard the new album, take my word for it. The last album, not so good. This one, it's almost as if they haven't lost a step. Go out, get it, listen to it. It's fantastic. Thanks for watching, guys. Pop Man out. Bo! Move away!